Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ath Athanasios Raikos. I'm teaching uh, anatomy uh, in the Faculty of Health Science and Medicine. In background, I'm a physician uh, and an anatomist, obviously. And today, I'll talk to you about uh, virtual and augmented reality resources in, uh, in teaching anatomy. So what is anatomy? Anatomy is the study of morphology of human organs and tissues. And the term derives from the Greek anatemno, which means dissect or cut. And anatomy has been firstly established as a science by Aristotle uh, in the old times. Anatomy has a lot of subdivisions, uh, such as embryologic anatomy, the study of embryos, uh, gross anatomy, when you study, uh, you know, with the, the cadaveric, uh, uh, cadaveric specimens. Uh, microscopic anatomy is a study of, uh, micro, of the microscopic anatomy, the histology of, the, of uh, slides. Uh, surgical anatomy is a study of anatomy uh, in, during surgical interventions. Uh, radiologic anatomy is a study using um, uh, medical modalities, medical imaging modalities. And the last one is clinical anatomy, which is quite uh, uh, useful in the clinical field. Uh, anatomy teaching has shrunk considerably over the years. Uh, I would say that 100 years before, in, in the beginning of the previous century, uh, the average uh, teaching anatomy in the curricula was about 550 hours. And nowadays has shrunk to 120, 140 hours uh, in the, the average curriculum. Um, the approaches are numerous. The classical approach is obviously uh, lectures in the amphitheater, um, utilization of macerated and dry bones and skeletons, um, a, a huge variety of plastic models, uh, prosected material, um, other types of protect, prosected material stored in pots. All these varieties available. Also, you know, utilization of medical imaging modalities, CT scans, MRIs, uh, typical plain X-rays, uh, casts of uh, raisin um, material. All these are available in to teach anatomy. There are a lot of challenges in learning anatomy. Probably you might heard of this from your friends or from your uh, people who are involved in biomedical sciences. Terminology is a huge issue. We are talking about over two and a half thousand new words. Many of them are Latin and Greek, so it can be quite challenging. Uh, the complexity of human nature uh, and the anatomy is also a, a very challenging thing. Uh, learning anatomy and uh, requires a lab uh, with substantial resources and requires specialized personnel to teach. Uh, Sourcing cadavers could be, an, could be a very big issue, especially in some Muslim countries. They are quite uh, um, difficult to source cadavers and have find body donors. But then most of all is the 3D visualization. The students should be able to understand the spatial relationship between structures. That is a, the really challenging thing uh, in anatomy. Uh, over the last 20 years, a lot of innovations appeared and been used quite uh, used very frequently, such as uh, dissection videos, anatomy videos that are available on DVDs and online. Uh, another new a new innovation is um, a plastination technique. It's a new technique to prepare cadaveric specimens. You can prepare cadaveric specimens using epoxy plastination or silicon plastination. Uh, in the middle is a good example of uh, epoxy plastinated sli slices. You have coronal sections of a human body, very thin sections like half, uh, three, four millimeters thick. Uh, also, there is a huge amplitude of uh, uh, applications of software, 3D atlases, um, desktop uh, learning modules for learning anatomy, all the variety you can imagine. And also the last 10 years, uh, there we have the appearance of some virtual dissection tables that you can dissect a uh, human body using a, a table with a screen like that. Other innovations are uh, the use of Play-Doh. My colleague Joe uses uh, quite frequently. They use Play-Doh and you can resemble uh, the human structures and vessels and nerves on, on the table. Uh, another one is the colored uh, pipe cleaners. You can somehow simulate vessels and nerves uh, on, a, on a model such as this one. And another one which is quite interesting and it's been used uh, in many universities heavily, uh, it's body painting. So you can use uh, crayons and you can paint on the body uh, what is represented under the skin. 
Um, other innovations which has been appeared the last 20 years, but the last 10 years have been used more and more, is the utilization of uh, medical imaging data sets such as MRIs and CT scans. Uh, and you can use specialized software to create a 3D model from the, city, from the medical modalities, and then you can print this on a 3D printer, and then you can have a physical model of, uh, of a 3D structure. And last one is YouTube. YouTube is been, has thousands of uh, anatomy videos, and our students are using this quite heavily, as far as I know. Um, the next year is expected to be uh, a very enthusiastic year in terms of virtual reality. It's expected to have a lot of um, devices, virtual reality devices available on the market, on the commercial market. And there are big uh, companies like Sony, uh, Oculus, which is now supported by Microsoft, and HTC, they have developed their own 3D glasses. Also, Google has a cheap alternative, it's called Google Cardboard, and you can use your phone to present uh, virtual images uh, on, on your eyes. Um, another really exciting thing is holographic anatomy. Christian, uh, which will follow me, will um, present you a few more information about holographic uh, images. So Microsoft is developing um, HoloLens, which will be a new type of glass that projects holographic images in front of you, which will be really exciting and really uh, interesting in using anatomy to, to teach uh, using these uh, modalities. Uh, what are the advantages of virtual reality? Of course, you can represent pictures in a very realistic way. Once you have established the models and the software and you have purchased the equipment, it's low cost to run. You don't need to spend anything after that. Can make learning quite fun and interesting. It is an excellent self-directed learning model, so the students can learn at their own pace. They can repeat uh, whatever they want. Uh, Definitely can be used remotely. If you have the 3D glasses and a decent computer, it's ready to go. Uh, it provides a combination of 3D images and audio. You can use headphones and you can have a narration, which is quite uh, important if you want to make it uh, proper. Uh, and also fits excellently the new generation learners. So what we've done uh, in the Faculty of Health Sciences and Medicine, we have developed a new uh, model using virtual reality uh, devices. Uh, we are using a variety of 3D models, 3D art, uh, and we, what we've done, it's linked with the semester learning outcomes and, and objectives. So, for example, we took the eye and we linked all the LOs from the current semester and we have prepared a narration and the student can use the glasses and the narration on the headphones and this can give him a a pure uh, involvement in, in learning, uh, and it's quite interesting uh, to see the result for that. All the students have full control over the model. They can stop, they can pause the narration, they can learn in their own pace. And also we are planning to expand on other devices in the future. So our team is composed of three uh, academics, myself, uh, Christian Moro, and Alan Sterling. Uh, we are young, enthusiastic, and we want to use all the technology available in the world to teach our students. Um, the students are quite excited so far. We, we have tested to a few students to make sure that uh, we get some good feedback in order to develop the models and the whole software in a, in a proper way. Um, and this is how it looks from uh, inside. Um, the students can, can rotate their head left and right. They can use the mouse to rotate around the model. They can zoom in, zoom out. Um, on the, there is a, a green dot here. So whatever you, uh, this green dot touches, uh, it gets selected and you get um, uh, um, uh, the name of the structure involved. And also on the headphones, you can hear your academic explaining about all this more in detail. And if the student missed something, they can stop, they can skip back 10 seconds, they can listen again. It's directed, but also gives you the freedom to do whatever you like. Uh, that's uh, another one that we developed for the inner and middle ear, which is really challenging to learn because they, we are talking about a structure that is only two centimeters long. It's impossible to visualize this in a cadaver. Uh, and that model, it, it is really uh, unbelievable in examining the inner ear anatomy. Um, and the last one is the eye model. 
You can see all the different layers of the eye. You can see uh, the retina. You can see the iris, all, all the parts of the body. And all this, of course, is accompanied by the narration. So you have the narration. You listen to the academic. You have all the direction. And then you do whatever you want. You just navigate around the model in your own pace. And if something important has been discussed during the narration, then it pops up the hidden uh, uh, objects. So if you hidden something, you hide something because you want. If you're the academic um, involves something like that, then it pops up, and then you can hide it again. So it, it, you never miss anything. It's coming back because it's connected. Um, thank you for that. So that was my part, and Christian will continue on that. All right. The real key is that when we're teaching in a lecture format, or even with the cadavers, the students don't get to have that inquisitive mind about themselves. If I'm, if I'm teaching the, the regions of the brain, and I finish talking about the frontal area and you move on, if they still have questions or they're inquisitive about the frontal area, we can't go back. We tend to be a bit more linear. Whereas with this technology, they can be looking at it, listen to a podcast, they can pause, go back and really explore. The idea is with virtual reality to move them into a world where it's just them. All their senses are overloaded. We have uh, your, your ears are blocked because you've got the um, headphones on and the podcast going. Your entire eyes are blacked out. So you're really in that space, in that world, and it's entirely student-driven. The student is 100% in control. They can pause and move and explore and, and see this virtual world. So it's not just virtual reality. We're doing a few other things as well. Yeah, the idea is to try and find ways to enhance that exploratory learning, get the students out there doing things and exploring themselves, satisfying that curiosity while also having the tools to use it as learning and then also revision in the same space. Uh, we also try and get more participation, engagement, interactivity, that us standing here giving names of, of bones and organs on the screen probably is a, is a way to learn, to accompany that with something that really gets them participating and interacting is important. So the virtual reality, like Athanasius mentioned, we've got a few other things. There's also the tablet-based applications where they do have that kind of 2D, sort of pseudo 3D, being able to move and look into it, which is useful as well, but we're really excited about these two, the VR and then the augmented reality. So the VR blocks you in that space where you, you can't see anything else but the area that you're in, the environment that we've designed. Um, the AR is slightly different. You might have seen it before. How augmented reality works is we use a marker, for example, one of these and the students come along with their phones, and on top of the marker, if I show you for an example, us, us developing it, so the idea is that in your phone, it will develop the heart or the lung or the skull in this case. So we can sort of work out where we want the skull. And what happens is students will put this down, they'll get their phones out, and this is ready now for use. We're happy to use this next semester, and you point it, up pops the organ. So you can move it around, you can look at it, you can contact it, touch it, we're not yet interactive yet. One day we're going to start being able to manipulate muscles and move them. At the moment we can remove layers. So we can come along, we can, we can touch it and remove the skull and get into the inner ear and see what's there. But it's slightly different. So the same models, and the thing is that as we're developing for virtual reality, we can also develop for augmented reality. It's the same models just in a different application. And the software that we're using allows direct exports to a tablet-based application, a VR, an AR, that sort of thing. So it's, it's quite exciting. Um, the students are getting used to it. They're putting a lot of time into thinking about how long can you spend in VR? How long can you spend in AR? Um, are, you, are the students going to get dizzy after 20 minutes? So we look at optimal parameters as well. So there's quite a lot there. We want them to really enjoy it. Uh, we're thinking little things like we've just started for a little tablet. You get, them, you get sore hands after a while. We want them comfortable doing it for, you know, I mean, to even just up in an hour lecture, doing it for 30, 40 minutes. So we look at little stands that can hold the tablets or hold the, the phones while they're doing it. So there's a lot of little, as we get into this environment, there's a lot of extra considerations that we're thinking about. Uh, and I will say, the Oculus Rift and the virtual realities haven't really been released yet. We've managed to get our hands on developers' kits. So the actual models, Facebook have put a lot of money into Oculus. And so by the middle of next year, these will actually be, we're using them now, but when the brand new ones come out, we'll be ready to go. Uh, so here's an example of a model that we're using straight from uh, so this one here. You can just sit up there and sit right above the augmented reality or in the virtual reality. You can go inside that and look around. Every little corner of it, every little layer starts to highlight with a name. So it's, it's really going to be quite useful. So that's sort of the virtual environment. 
The next level then is not just a virtual environment, but having something real. And we've been using a little bit of these 3D printed models in class quite a bit. So the idea is that you can start to use, for example, if I'm talking about, here's an example, if I'm talking about a red blood cell, this is one quarter of hemoglobin. And so rather than simply have this picture up on the board, we're finding that now we can bring sort of what we used to have in a virtual space and bring it into a real environment and actually using 3D printed models in class. This is the last little technique we're doing quite a lot of. There's a red blood cell. <laughs> um, but the idea is that we've always done things like, here's a DNA, here's one that we've used recently. This, for example, is one that we've used next week in a class. This is an antibody and uh, antigen. So this is actually the body's immune system and how it works. And on the screen, it's a little bit blunt. It's a little bit sort of this this big 3D structure. But the idea is that we can print out a bunch of these. I've got this in all different sizes. Uh, and this actually, this is straight from a 3D scan. So this is an actual mouse, it's a mouse antibody, but this is a 100% real antibody that's been scanned. <coughs> you just go file print from the actual protein databases. So it really is quite beautiful. Uh, we can do it in all different sizes. This is a larger version of, of my little one. But we, we can sort of walk around here, we can give the students these antibodies, they can hold them, we can come along and explain in the classroom what's happening, and actually use their hands in class, which is quite interesting. Uh, and then you know, we want little simpler antibodies, that's actually how they sort of look in the head, so we have students kind of chase each other around with antibodies, trying to grab the antigen. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they work quite well. And then other little things, I mean, we're talking about drugs quite a lot, and looking at pharmacology, it's so much better to have these. Uh, actually, no, this is serotonin. Yep. So I have a little repertoire of, of drugs and whatnot, and we're talking about them rather than sort of use the screen. So I'm finding that there's a few little innovations that we're doing. So the virtual reality, the augmented reality, is sort of giving the students that participation, but then also enhancing the class participation by bringing them forward uh, and having things in the classroom. So this is the next step. This is HoloLens. So this hasn't been released yet, but we're developing for it now. Um, hopefully, by this time next year we'll have a whole different thing. But the idea now is this is a mix between augmented and virtual reality. Where you put on these glasses and in front of you develops a hologram. Kind of like the AR, but it's more of the whole body. So we have a body and we have it ready and coded. We're in contact with Microsoft trying to get a hold of this. But the idea will be simply to have students. This doesn't replace cadaveric uh, dissections and lectures. It's kind of just augmented. It's something on top of it that the students can do for their self-directed learning. But this will sort of be where we're heading, is into a holographic body and holographic um, environments. And some students might prefer this, some might prefer virtual reality, where they're blocked out just in that space. And we're really we able to cater what's happening in terms of the 3D environments to the actual students. So watch this space. We're working on that now. And hopefully in the middle of next year that will be released. They keep pushing it forward, uh, the date, but in November we're actually going to get the development, the final development pack for that. So we can start working towards HoloLens. So that's sort of in the future, next time. Thanks, guys.